The histoire naturelle, générale et particulière, avec la description du cabinet du roi French for natural history, general and particular, with a description of the king's cabinet is an encyclopedic collection of 36 large quarto volumes written between 1749–1804 by the Comte de Buffon, and continued in eight more volumes after his death by his colleagues, led by Bernard Germain de Lassay. The books cover what was known of the «natural sciences» at the time, including what would now be called material science, physics, chemistry and technology as well as the natural history of animals. <laughs> Histoire naturelle, an encyclopedic work The Histoire naturelle, générale et particulière, avec la description du cabinet du roi is the work that the Comte de Buffon is remembered for. He worked on it for some fifty years, initially at Montbert in his office in the Tour St. Louis, then in his library at Petite Fontenette. Thirty-six volumes came out between 1749 and 1789, followed by eight more after his death, thanks to Bernard Germain de Lassépide. It includes all the knowledge available in his time on the «natural sciences», a broad term that includes disciplines which today would be called material science, physics, chemistry and technology. Buffon notes the morphological similarities between men and apes, although he considered apes completely devoid of the ability to think, differentiating them sharply from human beings. Buffon's attention to internal anatomy made him an early comparative anatomist. L'interieur, dans les êtres vivants, est la fond du dessin de la nature, he wrote in his Quadrupedes. The interior, in living things, is the foundation of nature's design." The Histoire naturelle, which was meant to address the whole of natural history, actually covers only minerals, birds, and the quadrupeds among animals. It is accompanied by some discourses and a theory of the earth by way of introduction, and by supplements including an elegantly written account of the epics of nature. The supplements cover a wide range of topics, for example, in Supplements IV, there is a discours sur la style, discourse on style and an essay d'arithmétique morale essay on moral arithmetic. Louis Jean Marie Daubenton assisted Buffon on the quadrupeds, Philippe Guénaud de Montbillard worked on the birds. They were joined, from 1767, by Barthélemy Fauhas de Saint Fond, the abbot Gabriel Bexon, and Charles Nicolas Sigisbert Sunini de Manincourt. The whole descriptive and anatomical part of L'Histoire des Quadrupedes was the work of Daubenton and Jean Claude Mertrude. Buffon attached much importance to the illustrations. Jacques de Seve illustrated the quadrupeds, and Francois Nicolas Martinet illustrated the birds. Nearly 2,000 plates adorn the work, representing animals with care given both to aesthetics and anatomical accuracy, with dreamlike and mythological settings. On minerals, Buffon collaborated with Andre Thouin. Barthélemy Fauhas de Saint Fond and Louis Bernard Guyton de Morveau provided sources for the mineral volumes. La Histoire Naturelle met immense success, almost as great as Encyclopédie by Diderot, which came out in the same period. The first three volumes of La Histoire Naturelle, Générale et Particulière, avec la description du cabinet du roi, were reprinted three times in six weeks. The encyclopedia appeared in 36 volumes. Three volumes in 1749, De la manière d'étudier et la histoire naturelle, followed by Théorie de la Terre, Histoire générale des animaux, and Histoire naturelle de l'homme. Twelve volumes on quadrupeds, 1753 to 1767. 
nine volumes on birds, 1770 to 1783. Five volumes on minerals, 1783 to 1788. The last including Traité de Lament, the last work published by Buffon in his lifetime. Seven volumes of supplements, 1774 to 1789, including Epoques de la Nature, from 1778. La Histoire Naturelle was initially printed at the Imprimerie Royale in 36 volumes, 1749 to 1789. In 1764, Buffon bought back the rights to his work. It was continued by Bernard Germain de Lassapide, who described the egg-laying quadrupeds, snakes, fishes and cetaceans in eight volumes Buffon was assisted in the work by Jacques-François Artur Gabriel-Léopold Charles Amé Bexon Louis-Jean-Marie Daubenton E. D. M. E. Louis Daubenton Jacques de Seve active 1742–1788 Barthélemy Fauhas de Saint Fond, 1741 to 1819; Philippe Guénaud de Montbillard, 1720 to 1785; Louis Bernard Guyton Morveau, 1737 to 1816; Bernard Germain de La Sapide, 1756 to 1825; François Nicolas Martinet, 1731 to 1800; the anatomist Jean Claude Mertrude, 1728 to 1802, Charles Nicolas Sigisbert Sunini de Manincourt, 1751 to 1812, and Andre Thouin, 1747 to 1823. Topic: Approach. Each group is introduced with a general essay. This is followed by an article, sometimes of many pages, on each animal or other item. The article on the wolf begins with the claim that it is one of the animals with a specially strong appetite for flesh. It asserts that the animal is naturally coarse and cowardly, grossier et poltron, but becoming crafty at need, and hardy by necessity, driven by hunger. The language, as in this instance, is elegant and elaborate, even flowery and ornate. Buffon was roundly criticized by his fellow academics for writing a purely popularizing work, empty and puffed up, with little real scientific value. The species is named in Greek, Latin, Italian, Spanish, German, English, Swedish, and Polish. The zoological descriptions of the species by Gessner, Ray, Linnaeus, Klein and Buffon himself, Canis ex grisio flavescens, lupus vulgaris, Buffon, reg, animal, pag, 235, are cited. The text is written as a continuous essay, without the sections on identification, distribution and behavior that might have been expected from other natural histories. Parts concern human responses rather than the animal itself, as for example that the wolf likes human flesh, and the strongest wolves sometimes eat nothing else. Measurements may be included. In the case of the wolf, 41 separate measurements are tabulated, in pre revolutionary French feet and inches, starting with the length of the whole body measured in a straight line from the end of the muzzle to the anus. 0.3 feet, 7 inches, 1.2 meters. The length of the largest claws is given as 10 lines 2.2 centimeters the wolf is illustrated standing in farmland and as a complete skeleton standing on a stone plinth in a landscape the account of the species occupies 32 pages including illustrations topic <laughs> additions Topic 
Topic: <laughs> Buffon's original edition continued by Lassapied. The original edition of the Histoire naturelle by Buffon comprised 36 volumes in quarto, divided into the following series, Histoire de la terre et de l'homme, quadrupedes, oiseau, minero, supplements. Buffon edited 35 volumes in his lifetime. Soon after his death, the fifth and final volume of L'Histoire des Minéraux appeared in 1788 at the Imprimerie des Batiments du Roy. The seventh and final volume of Supplements by Buffon was published posthumously in 1789 through Lassapide's hands. Lassapide continued the part of the Histoire naturelle which dealt with animals. A few months before Buffon's death, and 1788, Lassapide published, as a continuation, the first volume of his Histoire des Reptiles, on egg-laying quadrupeds. The next year, he wrote a second volume on snakes, published during the French Revolution. Between 1798 and 1803, he brought out the volume Histoire des Poissons. Lassapide made use of the notes and collections left by Philibert Commerson 1727 He wrote Histoire des Cetaces which was printed in 1804. At that point, the Histoire naturelle, by Buffon and Lassapide, thus contained 44 quarto volumes forming the definitive edition. Topic. Variations in the editions by Buffon and Lassapide Another edition in quarto format was printed by the Imprimerie Royale in 36 volumes 1774 It consisted of 28 volumes par Buffon, and 8 volumes by Lassapide. The part containing anatomical articles by Louis Jean Marie Dobinton was dropped. The supplements were merged into the relevant articles in the main volumes. The Imprimerie Royale also published two editions of the Histoire naturelle in duodecimo format, 1752-1805, occupying 90 or 71 volumes, depending on whether or not they included the part on anatomy. In this print format, the original work by Buffon occupied 73 volumes with the part on anatomy, or 54 volumes without the part on anatomy. The continuation by Lassapide took up 17 duodecimo volumes. A deluxe edition of Histoire naturelle des oiseaux, birds, 1771-1786, was produced by the Imprimerie Royale in ten folio and quarto volumes, with 1,008 engraved and hand-colored plates, executed under Buffon's personal supervision by E. D. M. E. Louis Dobinton, cousin and brother-in-law of Buffon's principal collaborator. Topic. Translations The Histoire naturelle was translated into languages including English, German, Swedish, Russian and Italian. Many translations, often partial single volumes, or all volumes to a certain date, abridged, reprinted in the same translation by different printers, or with additional text for example on insects and new illustrations, were made at the end of the 18th century and the start of the 19th century, presenting a complicated publication history. Early translations were necessarily only of the earlier volumes. Given the complexity, all catalogue dates other than of single volumes should be taken as approximate. R. Griffith published an early translation of the volume on the horse in London in 1762. T. Bell published a translation of the first six volumes in London between 1775 and 1776. William Creech published an edition in Edinburgh between 1780 and 1785. T. Caudale and W. Davies published another edition in London in 1812. 
An abridged edition was published by Wogan, Bern et al. in Dublin in 1791, that same year R. Morrison and son of Perth, J. and J. Fairburn of Edinburgh and T. K. and C. Forster of London published their edition. W. Strahan and T. Caudale published a translation with notes by the encyclopedist William Smelly in London around 1785. Bars Buffon in ten volumes was published in London between 1797 and 1807. W. Davidson published an abridged version including the natural history of insects taken from Swammerdam, Brooks, Goldsmith et al., with "...elegant engravings on wood." Its four volumes appeared in Anik in 1814. German translations include those published by Joseph Georg Trassler 1784 to 1785, by Pauli 1772 to 1829, Grund and Hall 1750 to 1775, and Johann Samuel Heinsius 1756 to 1782. Italian translations include those published by Fratel Bassalia around 1788 and Boringrari in 1959. Per Olaf Gravander translated an 1802–1803 French abridgment into Swedish, publishing it in Orebro in 1806–1807. A Russian version The General and Particular Natural History by Count Buffon Visibza i Kastna Estestvena Istoriographa Buffona was brought out by the Imperial Academy of Sciences Imperatorskij Akademie Nauk in St. Petersburg between 1789 and 1808. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Children's An abridged edition for children was published by Frederick Warren in London and Scribner, Welford and Co. c. 1870. Topic contents by volume The original edition was arranged as follows, Natural History, and Description of the King's Cabinet of Curiosities Volume 1, Premier Discours, de la manière d'étudier et de traiter la histoire naturelle, Second Discours, Histoire et théorie de la Terre, Proves de la théorie de la Terre, 1749 Volume 2, Histoire générale des animaux, Histoire naturelle de l'homme, 1749 Volume 3, Description du cabinet du roi, Histoire naturelle de l'homme, 1749 Quadrupedes quadrupeds, Volume 4, Quadrupedes I, Discours sur la nature des animaux, Les animaux domestiques, 1753 Volume 5, Quadrupedes II, 1755 Volume 6, Quadrupedes III, Les animaux sauvages. 1756 Vol. 7, Quadrupedes IV, Les Animo Carnassiers, 1758 Vol. 8, Quadrupedes V, 1760 Vol. 9, Quadrupedes V, 1761 Vol. 10, Quadrupedes 7, 1763 Vol. 11, Quadrupedes 8, 1764 Vol. 12, Quadrupedes X, 1764 Vol. 13, Quadrupedes X, 1765 Vol. 14, Quadrupedes 11, Nomenclature des Singes, de la Degeneration des Animaux, 1766 Vol. 15, Quadrupedes 12, 1767 Histoire naturelle des oiseaux, birds, 1770 1783, Vol. 16, Oiseau I, 1770 Vol. 17, Oiseau II, 1771 Vol. 18, Wazo 3, 1774 Vol. 19, Wazo IV, 1778 Vol. 20, Wazo V, 1778 Vol. 21, Wazo V, 1779 Vol. 22, Wazo 7, 1780 Vol. 23, Wazo 8, 1781 Vol. 24, Wazo X, 1783 Histoire naturelle des minéraux, 
Minerals, 1783 to 1788, Volume 25, Mineral I, 1783, Volume 26, Mineral II, 1783, Volume 27, Mineral III, 1785, Volume 28, Mineral IV, 1786, Volume 29, Mineral V. Traité de Layman et de ses usages, 1788. Supplements à la histoire naturelle, générale et particulière. Supplements, 1774 to 1789, Volume 30. Supplements I. Servant de suite à la théorie de la terre et d'introduction à la histoire des minéraux, 1774, Volume 31. Supplements II. Servant de suite à la théorie de la Terra, et de préliminaire à la histoire des végétaux, parties expérimentales et hypothétique, 1775 vol. 32 Supplements 3, Servant de suite à la histoire des animaux quadrupèdes, 1776 vol. 33 Supplements IV, Servant de suite à la histoire naturelle de l'homme, 1777 vol. 34 Supplements V, des époques de la nature. 1779 Vol. 35 Supplements v. Servant de suite à la histoire des animaux quadrupèdes, 1782 Vol. 36 Supplements 7. Servant de suite à la histoire des animaux quadrupèdes, 1789 Histoire naturelle des quadrupèdes ovipares et des serpents egg laying quadrupèdes and snakes, 1788-1789 Vol. 37 Reptiles I, Histoire générale et particulière des quadrupèdes ovipares, 1788 Vol. 38, Reptiles II, Histoire des serpents, 1789 Histoire naturelle des poissons, fish, 1798-1803, Vol. 39, Poissons I, 1798 Vol. 4X, Poissons II, 1800 Vol. X X X X I Poissons three eighteen oh two volume X X X X I I Poissons I V eighteen oh two volume X X X X I I I Poissons V eighteen oh three Histoire naturelle des cetaces Cetaceans eighteen oh four volume X X X X I V Cetaces eighteen oh four Topic Reception Topic Contemporary The Histoire Naturelle had a distinctly mixed reception in the eighteenth century. Wealthy homes in both England and France purchased copies, and the first edition was sold out within six weeks. But Buffon was criticized by some priests for suggesting in the essay Les Epochs de Nature, volume 34, that the earth was more than 6,000 years old and that mountains had arisen in geological time. Buffon cites as evidence that fossil sea shells had been found at the tops of mountains, but the claim was seen as contradicting the biblical account in the Book of Genesis. Buffon also disagreed with Linnaeus's system of classifying plants as described in Systema Natura 1735. In Buffon's view, expounded in the «Premier Discours» of the Histoire Naturelle 1749, the concept of species was entirely artificial, the only real entity in nature being the individual, as for a taxonomy based on the number of stamens or pistils in a flower, mere counting, despite Buffon's own training in mathematics, had no bearing on nature. The Paris Faculty of Theology, acting as the official censor, wrote to Buffon with a list of statements in the Histoire Naturelle that were contradictory to Roman Catholic Church teaching. Teaching. Hypocritically, Buffon replied that he believed firmly in the biblical account of creation, and was able to continue printing his book, and remain in position as the leader of the old school, complete with his job as director of the Royal Botanical Garden. 
On Buffon's death, the 19-year-old Georges Cuvier celebrated with the words, "'This time, the Comte de Buffon is dead and buried." Soon afterwards, the French Revolution went much further in sweeping away old attitudes to natural history, along with much else. Topic: Modern. Topic: Philosophy. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy calls the Histoire Naturelle Buffon's major work, observing that. In addressing the history of the earth, Buffon also broke with the counterfactual tradition of Descartes, and presented a secular and realist account of the origins of the earth and its life forms. In its view, the work created an age of Buffon, defining what natural history itself was, while Buffon's discourse on method unlike that of Descartes at the start of the work argued that repeated observation could lead to a greater certainty of knowledge even than mathematical analysis of nature. Buffon also led natural history away from the natural theology of British parson naturalists such as John Ray. He thus offered both a new methodology and an empirical style of enquiry. Buffon's position on evolution is complex, he noted in Volume 4 from Daubenton's Comparative Anatomy of the Horse and the Donkey that species might «transform», but initially 1753 rejected the possibility. However, in doing so he changed the definition of a species from a fixed or universal class which could not change, by definition, to the historical succession of ancestor and descendant linked by material connection through generation", identified by the ability to mate and produce fertile offspring. Thus the horse and donkey, which produce only sterile hybrids, are seen empirically not to be the same species, even though they have similar anatomy. That empirical fact leaves open the possibility of evolution. Topic. Style The botanist Sandra Knapp writes that, "...Buffon's prose was so purple that the ideas themselves are almost hidden." Observing that this was also the contemporary academic opinion. She notes that some quite radical ideas are to be found in his work, but they are almost invisible, given the language they are cloaked in. She quotes Buffon's dramatic description of the lion, which along with the engraving in her view, "...emphasized both the lion's regal bearing and personality not only in his text but also in the illustration a reader was left in no doubt as to the importance and character of the animal." She concludes. No wonder the cultured aristocratic public lapped it up, the text reads more like a romantic novel than a dry scientific treatise. <inaudible> <inaudible> evolutionary thought The evolutionary biologist Ernst Meyer comments that in this monumental and fascinating Histoire naturelle, Buffon dealt in a stimulating manner with almost all the problems that would subsequently be raised by evolutionists. Written in a brilliant style, this work was read in French or in one of the numerous translations by every educated person in Europe." Meyer argued that virtually all the well-known writers of the Enlightenment were Buffonians, and calls Buffon the father of all thought in natural history in the second half of the 18th century. Meyer notes that Buffon was not an evolutionist, but was certainly responsible for creating the great amount of interest in natural history in France. 
He agrees that Buffon's thought is hard to classify and even self-contradictory, and that the theologians forced him to avoid writing some of his opinions openly. Meyer argues however that Buffon was fully aware of the possibility of common descent, and was perhaps the first author ever to articulate it clearly." Quoting Buffon at length, starting with, "...not only the ass and the horse, but also man, the apes, the quadrupeds, and all the animals might be regarded as constituting but a single family." And later, "...that man and ape have a common origin." and that, "...the power of nature with sufficient time, she has been able from a single being to derive all the other organized beings." Meyer notes, however, that Buffon immediately rejects the suggestion and offers three arguments against it, namely that no new species have arisen in historical times, that hybrid infertility firmly separates species, and that animals intermediate between, say, the horse and the donkey are not seen in the fossil record. <laughs> Notes <laughs>